Today, we're going to start on the book of Deuteronomy. Okay, uh, we have, in a sense, uh, did eight weeks of Joshua. Now, it's very unique because um, when we do the book of Deuteronomy, actually, we are taking one step backwards in time from Joshua. You see, Joshua is after Deuteronomy. I like what Pastor Fergus said yesterday evening in the first service. It is like watching Netflix series and you so happen to finish season two of a serial. And you like it so much. So now you want to know what actually happened in season one. So Deuteronomy is season one. We just did season two. Why? Uh? Why is Deuteronomy so important? Because Joshua tells us the moment they crossed the river Jordan to the promised land. And Joshua contains, the book of Joshua, contains Joshua's words to the children of Israel to prepare them to cross over and then documents 24, 25 years of journey into the promised land. Deuteronomy, on the other hand, records Moses' final words to the children of Israel before they cross over Jordan. So now, after 40 years in the wilderness, it is in the final week from chapter 1 of Deuteronomy to chapter 34 of Deuteronomy, the span is one week. It is the final week of Moses' life before in Deuteronomy 34, he climbs up Mount Nebo and dies. So in the final week, after 40 years wandering in the wilderness, what do you say? Deuteronomy, no? So Deuteronomy records the final words of Moses before he leaves them. Today is the overview, so I will deal with it in the next 45 minutes or less. It's a tall order to do 34 chapters, but I'll try my very best to be clear to you and concise under these four headings. Number one, why Deuteronomy? Why did Moses write Deuteronomy? And Deuteronomy not only is written by Moses, Moses wrote the first five books of the Torah, all right? And Deuteronomy is the last book of the Torah, so it's not even concluding Deuteronomy, it's concluding the Torah. All right? So it is Genesis, Leviticus, Numbers, uh, not Numbers, Genesis, Exodus. All right? Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. So it is the conclusion of the Torah. Very important book. We will divide the book of Deuteronomy, so that you understand the big picture. What are the most common words? And finally, I will conclude Deuteronomy like Moses concluded Deuteronomy. So why Deuteronomy? Deuteronomy comes from the compound word deuteronomos. Deutero is number two, second, Nomos is law. So Deuteronomy is the second law. It is the second time Moses now shared with the children of Israel about the laws of God. So when was the first time? Mount Sinai. In Exodus chapter 19, the first time when Moses led the children of Israel out of Egypt across the Red Sea, went straight to Mount Sinai, and at Mount Sinai, when God thundered on Mount Sinai, the whole mountain shook, earthquake, smoke, fire. God was speaking directly to the children of Israel. Actually, it was a marriage ceremony. Did you know that? 
in Mount Sinai because many times the children of Israel said, I do, I do, I do. It was a marriage ceremony. The covenant, God cut covenant with the children of Israel at Mount Sinai. But 40 years later, they forgot. An entire generation perished in the wilderness. So now, after 40 years, a new generation came that never saw the Red Sea. Moses gave them the law. Deutero nomos, the second time. But what has changed? Two things have changed after 40 years. After 40 years, things cannot be the same, right? So what has changed? Number one, do you know that after 40 years wandering in the wilderness, the promised land or the land of the Amorites have actually changed because the Amorites and the Canaanites have actually grown stronger. 40 years ago, remember? The two spies went in, wow, giants. Lah. But 40 years later, they have grown stronger still. And not only grown stronger still, they were more evil still. Why? Because after 430 years, the wickedness of the Amorites have now reached its fullness. And now, God says to the children of Israel, you go in, drive them out, kick them out, annihilate them. Why? Eh? Because the evilness and the wickedness of the Amorites, after 430 years, God gave them a time to repent. They didn't. In fact, became more wicked. Bestiality. Child sacrifices. Do you know that archaeology have dug up the bones of animals in the Canaanite area and it detected VD in the bones of animals? It was rampant. The wickedness of the Amorites have reached its limit. And God says, now I want you to go in. The children of Israel is an instrument. Annihilate them and occupy the land. It's a remove and a replace principle. But a second thing was also changed. Moses is not going to join them. Moses is not going to go with them. What? How can that be? Moses, you've led us 40 years in the wilderness and now we are going to cross you on the coming. Moses says, I can't. It's another story. Out of that generation that perished, only three survived. Moses at that time, huh? Joshua and Caleb. But Moses is not going. How can that be? So Moses now said to the children of Israel, before you cross, hear me, hear me well. In this whole transition of one era into another era. You've heard me say this many times, and I want to repeat it just for the sake of repeating it, so that you know the relevance of what we are doing in Joshua, why we are doing Deuteronomy this year and not 10 years ago, eh? is because in SIBKL, when we sought the Lord last year, we seek God every year in, in August, July, August, for the following year, understand the direction and so on, God prompted our spirits do Joshua, do Deuteronomy. Why? Because this season is a season of transition for the entire church. Now, those of you of SIBKL, this is very specific to us. And I've mentioned that in no uncertain terms. I am transiting out. I'm still alive. Moses is dead. Pastor Chu is still alive. Amen? But it is a period of transition. So everything that is said in Deuteronomy 
to prepare us is very, very relevant. So what did Moses say? It's heavy-duty stuff, huh? incidentally. But before I go into the heavy-duty stuff, let me give you a commercial break. All right, just to lighten things up a bit, you know, before we plunge into the heavy-duty stuff. And it's this. If you go to a Christian hairdresser, and this is the type of styles the Christian hairdresser will have. This is the Red Sea, the parting, remember? This is Mount Sinai. This is Pentecost, you know, the wind blowing. And this is Revelation. Ah! The tribulation. All the hair stand up. So I got my cartoonist, the church cartoonist, to draw three further hairdressing styles. And it's this. This is Jordan crossing. You know why? Because the gap is wider. Ma. Remember, the crossing was 20 miles upstream. All right. This is the Sea of Galilee, calmer, you see. And this is Mount Ebal and Mount Garazim. All right. And I predict that in the next 18 weeks, this hairstyle will be very popular in, among the young people at IBKL. This is what I call the Deuteronomy hairstyle. How do we divide the book of Deuteronomy? It's very easy. The entire book of Deuteronomy contains the three final sermons, speeches, or the messages of Moses. I told you. Moses is now talking to the children of Israel in the span of the last week of his life before he goes out of Mount Nabo. So what do you say? He said three speeches. And these three speeches is found in Deuteronomy chapter 1 to Deuteronomy chapter 33 because Deuteronomy chapter 34, he dies. Essentially, Moses didn't write Deuteronomy chapter 34, right? How can you say, I die, oh? How can you write? So who wrote Deuteronomy chapter 34? Probably Joshua. But it contains the three final messages of Moses. And that is how I divide the book of Deuteronomy. The first division, from chapter 1 to chapter 11, is Moses' opening speech. The first of three final sermons, final speeches. So what does it contain? It contains number one. Now, I'm just giving an overview, right? I won't go into a detail. So that when you see the big picture and we go into it from next week onwards, you do not miss the wood for the trees. All right? You don't get lost, like, in other words, into the minute taste. So the first thing in 11 chapters in Moses' opening speech is that, first of all, Moses highlighted to Israel regarding their resistance to God. 40 years in the wilderness, uh, whole life complain, 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 uh, rebel, remember? So Moses said, hey, you guys, uh, I want to remind you uh, that the 40 years in the wilderness, uh, how, how that generation that perished, whole life complain, uh, whole life complain, uh, I tell you, uh, God is not pleased. Uh, no. This is not right, that is not right. Don't do it. And then Moses reminded them, because it's a new generation, ma. don't be like your father. Ah. How sad, oh? How sad, right? If your father says to you, ah, son, don't be like me. Ah. No. You want to tell your child, right? Child, be like me. Cla clever, smart, everything, no. But here Moses is telling the children of Israel, huh, don't follow those stupid people. Huh? As you cross over to the, don't follow after your fathers who are rebellious, stubborn, recalcitrant, disobedient, 
and they all died. And then in his opening speech, Moses reminded them of the Ten Commandments. Why? Because the Ten Commandments form the basis of the entire law. You see? Out of that, there were 616 or something like that laws. But the basic foundation is the Ten Commandments. So, is the Ten Commandments applicable today? Yes! Jesus did not come to abolish the law, right? What did he come to do? Fulfill the law. It is still applicable. But the key chapter in the first segment is Deuteronomy chapter 6. And I think... Um, Pastor Jeffrey and Pastor Waiyan is doing this on the 10th of April. It's an amazing chapter. It's a pivotal chapter. Why? Because it contains the pivotal verse in the entire book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 6, verse 4 to 5, called the Shema. And he says this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your tongue. Read this with me. Come on, everyone. Let's read it together. Are you, sh- are you ready? Let's read the Shema, all right? And I'll tell you why in a short while. Uh, I, won't, I won't steal the thunder from Pastor Jeffrey or Pastor Wayan, but let me share with you as an overview why this is so important, all right? But first of all, let's read it together. Are you all right? Those of you online, all right? Those of you in SIBKL here on site, left to right, front to bottom, top to, top, top to bottom, all right? All right. Are you ready? Read it with me. Are you ready? Let's read the Shema together. Are you ready? Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4 to 5. One, two, three. The Lord our God, the Lord is one. With all your heart and with all your strength. What is the Shema? I just bet your appetite. The word Shema comes from the first word in Hebrew, here. Here is Shema. That's why it's called a Shema. Because it follows after the most important word, which is here. Why? Uh, I, uh, I thought it was Israel. I thought it was God. No. It's called the Shema because it's here. What is here? Here, the Shema is not only to hear and forget. Uh, many people hear the message from up there. What did pastor say? Uh, I don't know. Uh. What did pastor share with you last week? Uh, good message. I don't know. Uh. Or you go home to your wife, uh, your wife says, hey, how was the service? Uh, very good, very good message. What did he say? I don't know. Uh. Here, Shema, is to listen with wholehearted devotion to obey. So every Hebrew person knows this. The Shema. You don't only mouth it. You listen wholeheartedly to what God is saying and you obey. Obedience is implicit in the Shema. That's why up to today, every Jew up to today uh, have to repeat the Shema two times per day. How I know? Uh? During my, one of my trips, I went to Israel five times. I remember I was in Israel Jerusalem, in the lift, on a Sabbath. You know, the Jews in, in Jerusalem, on a Sabbath, uh, the lift stops at every floor one, no? automatically, because they programmed it. And I remembered, well, oh, so slow. No? A couple of maids of the hotel came into the lift, and they spoke in English one to another, and I heard this maid telling to the other maid the, the, to clean the room, 
Ayo, I can't remember her name. Ayo, today uh, I forgot to recite my Shima. Wow, I thought to myself, they recite Shima every day, twice a day. Why? Because it contains a very important statement. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one. Why is that so important? Because Yahweh is the only God that we have to worship and pay our allegiance to. It was more important during that time that the children of Israel keep on repeating it. Why? Because they are now going into the promised land where there are many gods. If they don't keep reminding themselves, what will happen is that before long, all of them will be led astray to worship the gods of the Canaanites, the gods of the Amorites. That's why they have to keep telling them why. It tells me one thing. Our God wants your loyalty 110% up to today. Oh, it doesn't really apply to Israel then. No. All of you here, and I say this to myself, don't have other gods. Mammon lah. Materialism, la, your children, la, even ministry, I said, even ministry can be our God. No! Only one God. And we have to keep reminding ourselves even today, maybe more so today. The Lord. Your God is one. But there's only half the Shema, you know. What is the other half? Love. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Why is the second half important? Because you cannot obey the laws of God if you don't love Him. Correct or not? That's why we find it so difficult. Ayo! That's why we, we fail. That's why we, 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 we don't, are not faithful to Him. Because we don't love Him. When the push comes to shove, we love other things more. No! When you and I love God, we will want to obey Him. Ask any wife. Ask any young adult who is in love. You ask them. When your spouse or your girlfriend or boyfriend loves you, you will do your utmost to please him or her, correct or not. When we love God, we will shima. We will listen and we will obey. There's more to it. Look forward to hearing from Pastor Jeffrey and Pastor Wayan. You know something? I, I, I put it up again. Do you know you look at the Ten Commandments? I'm very convinced now. Uh, after, now, I was saved in 1965. After 57 years as a Christian, I come to realize one thing, you know. This is very important. Your allegiance and loyalty to God must be 100%. We always say, God is not Lord at all if He is not Lord of all. Correct or not? No such thing uh, as partial obedience. Or not. And that's the reason why we, 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 we don't grow. 
I want to love the Lord. We sang the song just now, right? Your love is higher, deeper. I will never let you go. Do you mean it? Do you really mean it? Or talk, talk only. Sing, sing only. No. You look at the first three commandments. What is the first commandment? You shall have no other gods before me. Do you have other gods before God? Do you really love the Lord? What is the second one? You shall not make unto me any idol. Hey, this is commandment one, commandment two. No, what's commandment three? Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord in vain. In other words, don't shame the Lord. Don't take him for granted. Wow. Love the Lord. The Shema. One more time. Let's say this together. Shall we do that? All right. Are you ready? All right. One, two, three. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. The second speech or the second message of Moses from chapter 12 to chapter 26 contains all the laws. So I won't go into it, all right? I won't, but if we go into that, you'll find that there are laws concerning Israel's worship of God. So we want to learn, all right? What is God's commands on our, the way we worship Him? Isn't it important? Yes. Why? Because this is the way God wants us to worship Him. Huh? So let's learn. All right? Leadership structures. So there are laws concerning leadership. All right? It is very important to us. Laws concerning care for the poor. What we call social justice. Laws in the civil life of Israel. Now, I, I like this diagram from Pastor Fergus last night. And I took it from him. Huh? I stole from him. With permission, of course. And he did this very good. You see, from chapter 12 to chapter 16, laws of worship. Chapter 16, chapter 18, laws of leaders. Chapter 19, 35, laws of community life or called civil life. So I won't go into that detail, but you know that the second speech of Moses contains all the laws, all right? The third speech of Moses is to me very important. I would say the most important, huh? but very important. And I will spend a little bit more time on this. The third speech of Moses is the final words, the final of the final words before Moses goes up to Mount Nebo and die. Probably this could very well be the last day of Moses' life. I don't know. So what do you say? Two key chapters. And we will study that in great detail, in July, chapter 28. Guess who's doing it? Dang, dang. <laughs> Me and Elder Kuntat on the 2nd of July. And then, Pastor Fergus and Kim! Whoa, wow, praise God. is doing chapter 30 on the 16th of July now. I, 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 I'm looking forward to this, you know. I don't know. I, it's, it's mouth-watering. It's outstanding. It's excellent. To me, I, I, I look forward to this with more excitement uh, than uh, next week's match between Manchester United and Manchester City. <laughs> it's going to be good. It's going to be outstanding. You see why? Because these are the cool two key chapters in the final words of Moses. I want to hear what you want to say, right? So just give back your appetite a little bit. Chapter 28, why is this so mouth-watering? Why is this so important? Hey, it contains the blessings and the curses. Chapter 28, verse 1 to 2. Moses said to the children of Israel, and I say this to you as I be KL, those of you here and those of you online, 
if you fully obey the Lord your God and you carefully, uh, don't flippantly, uh, don't bole also can, that bole also no. If you fully, if you carefully, you know, whoa, how meticulous God can be. Do you think so? Hey, I, I, I don't know, I don't know how, 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 how to interpret this. Is it just browse over it? No. If you do that, follow all the commands because we will study in the next 18 weeks. The Lord your God will set Malaysia, will set you high above all the nations in your office, in your family, in your ministry, in everything that you do. And all these blessings will come upon you and accompany you if you obey the Lord your God. 14 verses. I don't know about you, huh? I want it. You will be blessed in the city. You will be blessed in the country. The fruit of your womb will be blessed. The crops of your land, meaning the work of your hands, huh? Your basket and your kneading trough will be blessed. You will be blessed when you come in. You will be blessed when you go out, etc., etc., etc. 14 verses. I'm, I'm going to pray that over us when I close afterwards. I want to bless you with Deuteronomy 28, verse 1 to 14. I don't know about you. I want it, right? Do you want it? How many of you want it? Raise your hands. Yeah. But it's predicated on obedience. Shema. Listen. Wholehearted, obey, and I will bless you. But what happens, Pastor, if I don't obey? Uh, 54 verses of curses. Uh. What? God, Pastor, God curse on her. Uh. The New Testament equivalent of curse is woe. Uh. You know, Jesus said, Woe? Don't play, play, oh. Don't take God for granted, oh. So that's the reason why I show you the Christian hairdresser, right? Just to lighten things up. Because it's heavy duty stuff, you know. It's very heavy duty. But what to do with the word of God, ma? Don't you think so? Do you want me to say sex sex, la, never mind, la, do anything you want to know? We preach the word of God as it is from the Bible. You take it or you leave it. 54 verses of curses. But what is curse? Huh? Curse means no blessing. Lah. Curses means no God. Lah. Do you want it? I don't know about you. Don't talk on here. Huh? So what is going to happen, I predict, in the next 18 weeks? You will be challenged. You will be challenged to your core. If you cannot take it, listen to another person's sermon. Now. You will be challenged. And my, my prayer is at the end of these 18 weeks, all of us will now love the Lord our God with all our heart, right? Yeah. You remember Jesus said this? that this is the greatest commandment. And upon this hangs the entire law and the prophets. It's so important, you know. So listen. Take it seriously. There must be a reason why uh, at this point in time of the life of this church, when we are transiting now, from one era to another era that God says, I want you now to anchor yourself into my laws. Deuteronomy. Because when we do that, God will bless us. Deuteronomy chapter 30 is the other key chapter. 
this day, Moses said, wow, really drama, man, this guy. You know, Moses is a very dramatic one, no? I know I am dramatic, but not so as dramatic as Moses. Lah. I call upon heaven and earth. I've never said that, right? I don't think so. Have I ever said, I call upon heaven and earth? No, I've never said that, right? But Moses said, I now call upon heaven. I call on earth as my witnesses. You know, don't play, play, oh. that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Now choose life so that you and your children may live and that you may love the Lord your God. Shema to His voice. Hold fast to Him because the Lord is your life. Do you believe it? So as we do the book of Deuteronomy in the next 18 weeks, it is more than just a sermon, understand? <laughs> it is life and death. Let me close. Can I have the musicians on, on stage? How do I close? Oh, I've said this last week, so I just brush it aside for in just two or three minutes. The most common word in Deuteronomy is the word law. No-brainer, right? Deutero, no mas, ma, the second law. Ma. But how many of us know that the most common word is also love? Wow! It really boggled my mind. Why, uh? How can you obey the law if you do not love God? Remember the Shema? Remember what Jesus said? Why? Because law without love is legalism. Do this, do this, do this. No, it's dutiful, duty bound. But love without law is license. Anything else can do, ma. no boundary lines. Ma. But law with love. That's liberty. So in the next 18 weeks, we are going to be set free. Amen? Amen? Come on, let's give God a clap offering. Should we do that? I'm excited. I don't know about you. I'm excited. I told you more excited than next week's match. It's mouth-watering because it goes right to the fundamentals of our core belief system. Let me close. How do I close? I close the way that Moses closed. If Jesus said this, all right, never mind. Ha! Huh. How did Moses close? Moses composed a song in Deuteronomy chapter 32. What? Moses? I thought Moses very square one. Huh? No, Pastor Chu may be square, lah, but Moses is not square. Moses is a musician, you know that? You know he wrote Psalm 90? Some means songs. Lah. He composed a song of Moses. You know, Mo Moses is a very talented one, no? Right? Because, you know why? When he built the tabernacle, only thing he saw it and then he could replicate it. Nobody else saw the tabernacle except Moses. So he was able to tell Bazalil how it looks like. Don't you think, if you ask me, I, I'm, I'm colorblind one, no? I got no sense of color one. I'm not colorblind, I got no sense of color. But Moses is a very talented guy. He sang the song of Moses. And what is the song of Moses? Guess what? It's a song that all of us know. Sing with me. Moses can sing, I can't sing, but you all can sing. Amen? Come, sing with me. Not yet, huh? not a closing song yet. Huh? Give me five more minutes. Come, let's sing. Amen. Whoa! Ascribe greatness to our God, the rock. His work is perfect, and all His ways are just. Ascribe greatness to our God, the rock. His work 
work is perfect and all of his ways are just a God of faithfulness and Please be seated. I haven't finished yet. <laughs> Five more minutes. This is not a closing song. But isn't it marvelous? We just stood spontaneously, right? Because we want to honor God. And Moses, in his closing f- phase of his life, composed a song of Moses. No, I, I, I want to make a confession, uh, a correction. You know, when I was doing Revelations with you all, we came to Revelations chapter 15. When they sang the song of Moses, remember, in heaven, and I told you that the song of Moses is the only song composed by a human being sung by the angels in heaven. I told you, sorry, it's not Teresa things. Yet Liang Tai Pia Water Sin, right? Or Donny Osmond's Puppy Love, that's my favorite. It is this. But I told you. That the song of Moses is found in Exodus chapter 15. No, actually, I was wrong. That is composed probably by Miriam when they crossed it. So, this is the Moses song. Forgive her. This is the song of Moses, not Exodus 15, Deuteronomy 32. And this song will be sung in heaven. Why? You ascribe greatness to our God. How not to sing more with the angels? And I come to a close. How did Moses end? Wow. It boggles my mind. No? As Moses now comes to the final paragraph of his speech, Moses, you know, predicted, yeah, I give you these laws, but I prophesy that you all will also now disobey. And not only will you disobey, you'll be exiled. What? That's what happened. They disobeyed. In spite of the second law, Deuteronomos, you can tell people a thousand times. If they don't want to listen, they will never listen. And God said, you will disobey me. But this is the good news. Now, it's all in Deuteronomy. I will circumcise your heart now. Now, the day will come when God said through Moses that the laws will no more be written on the tablets of stone. The laws will now be written on your heart. And this was highlighted and reiterated by the prophet Jeremiah, by the prophet Ezekiel. What is this? It's the basis of the new covenant. From now onwards, the day will come when Moses said, the laws of God will now be inscribed in your heart and by the power of the Holy Spirit, you can love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength. It is possible. And we are here now today. It is possible to love the Lord our God with all our heart. There's a good news. Do you love God? Because when you and I love Him, we will do all that we can to obey Him, right or wrong. We will do all that we can to please Him, right or wrong. We will not do anything to shame Him, right or wrong. So my prayer is that the next 18 weeks, let's love the Lord. Let's pray. It's going to be mouth-watering. It's going to be exciting. It's going to be a wonderful journey. Week after, don't miss church, huh? 
you'll be blessed. So Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this overview. We know, Lord, we are in for not a wonderful time of just hearing your word. Lord, we want to translate just hearing into Shema so that we listen to you wholeheartedly with an objective to obey you, Lord, to please you. And we know we can only do that when we love you, love you, love you. Oh God, we want to do that with all our heart, with all our strength, with all our mind. And from it, Lord, love our neighbour as ourselves. And upon this hangs all the law and all the prophets. Lord, help us to do that. Help us, Lord, to do just that. Thank you, Jesus, for Deuteronomy. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Oh, just spend a moment of quietness before I close you do that, church. I know it's only an overview, but I've done my very best to make it concise, clear to you, so you can grasp the big picture, the salient things. There's a lot more. My prayer for you and for me is in the next 18 weeks, four and a half months, we will journey together as a church. We will love the Lord together as a body of Christ. We don't want to honour man. We want to honour God, understand? We don't want to follow after any man. We want to follow the words of God. Because when we do that, we will be blessed. Because His promises never fail. His promises has never failed. Oh, Ramanda Kata da 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 Shandai. Just spend a moment of quietness before we sing this song that God's love will never let you go. So no matter what you're going through today, don't ever let go of God. If you feel that this short overview has impacted you and you want to love the Lord and you want to follow Him for the rest of your days, I want you to stand with me. I don't want you to stand just for the sake of standing, but you stand because something in your spirit is lighted up, is ignited. You want to love God again. You want to honour Him. You want to be faithful. Because this is the new covenant. It is possible. Because the Holy Spirit lives in you, lives in me. The only thing that is required of us, are you one, do you want to love God or not? You, are you willing or not? If you're willing, you stand. You stand with me. By standing, you say, Pastor, I want to love my God. I want to give Him 110% allegiance. I don't want to pay allegiance to any other gods, no matter how, what kind of shape and configuration that may be. The Lord, my God, is one. Is one and the only one. Oh, Ramanda, kata, da, 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 shoko. Oh, wow, almost 100% of you. Thank you. You're a good church, by the way. Those of you in a, in a, at home as well, you can either stand or raise your hands, whatever it is. By doing that, God sees you wherever you are. And my prayer is for that, is that God will honour what you do. It's not seer, seer, sahaja. Don't do that, my friend. Because if you fully obey the Lord, carefully obey the Lord, these things will follow you. This is the promise of God for you, your family, your children, your ministry, for the rest of your days. God is in the house. I can sense it. And God is ministering to many of you here one-on-one. -on -one. Even if you heard the word, even if you've sung the song, God is now challenging you. Do you really mean it? Will you bring me into your life? 
every aspect of your life so that there is no area around your life that you are that you cannot allow me to come in and the Lord will say this to you my friend even as I come into your life I'm not here to harm you I'm here to give you a hope and a future I'm here to bless you do you believe it or not but you have to follow me you have to obey me you have to give me 110% allegiance no, you will never be shortchanged. No, you will never lose out. Because God is a good God. He wants the best for you, your family, your business, your future, your ministry. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Father, I want to pray that this day we will choose life. We will choose life that we may live the abundant life that Jesus promised us. Jesus says, I have come to give you life and to give it to you abundantly. So God, we receive it this day. We receive this abundant life for our children, for the next generation of this church. That the blessings of God will go from generation to generation to generation. And so I pray that you will be blessed in the city and you will be blessed in the country. I bless you today that the fruit of your womb, meaning your children, will be blessed. I pray for you that your basket and your kneading trough, in other words, the work of your hands, the labor of your hands, will be blessed. I pray that you will be blessed in your travels as the travel borders are now open. You will be blessed in your coming out of your house and you'll go back to your home safely every day. I pray that the Lord will grant that enemies who rise up against you will be defeated. They will come to you in one direction. They will flee in seven. No harm will come to you. Every word spoken against you will boomerang back to the people who send it. The Lord will send a blessing upon your barns, upon everything you put your hands to, so that the labor of your hands will be fruitful. The Lord will bless you in Malaysia, in the land of Malaysia that He's giving to us. The Lord will establish us as His holy people. Every one of you will be set apart for God unto holiness. And all the people will see that we are called by the name of the Lord. And Lord, they will fear you. They will honor you. And the Lord will grant us abundant prosperity. The Lord will open the heavens and the storehouse of His bounty. Send rain upon our land in season. Bless all the work of our hands. We are to lend to many but borrow from none. The Lord will make us the head, not the tail. Hallelujah. We will always be at top, not the bottom. Oh, Father, we pledge and we promise to you that we will not turn aside and worship any other God because you are our only God. And we love you, Lord. We love you. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. May all the blessings of Deuteronomy 28 be our portion today as we leave this place. And so may the Lord bless you and keep you this day. May the Lord make His face always to shine upon you and your loved ones wherever they are. May the Lord turn His face to all of you and be gracious to you and always grant all of us shalom. 
In Jesus' precious name, we pray across people. Say aloud. Come on, let's give God a good clap offering. He deserves it. <laughs>